Hi folks, welcome to the second video for June's Art Journal in class with Dee Dee. If you missed the first one, you can hop on over to the Donna Downey Artist Game YouTube and see that there. Uh, here I have a DIY ink pad from Ranger that has been filled with black soot, archival ink, and one of my newest designs for Viva Las Vegas stamps, um, a doodle garden I think is what we named that, and I have stamped that on the lower right hand corner of my Canton watercolor background. If you watch any of my videos, you'll know that I really enjoy um, working on cans and watercolor paper. Then I've gotten out some Studio Blick acrylic and um, a medium-sized brayer. And I'm running the brayer through the paint and then onto my page along the top and the left. And it creates this sort of cool uh, wallpapery modeled effect that I, that I really, really enjoy, actually. And I can't wait to use that again, um, maybe all over the background on a different page. Um, here I am going, um, I'm using a wash brush and then uh, dipping some water into some of that leftover acrylic that's on my mat over there. And I'm just adding in some color. I am anchoring down my stamp. Until this point it was kind of floating on the page and I wasn't really digging that at all. So um, I'm using the paint to, to anchor it to the left or to the right hand side there. I just watered down some of the paint that was left over on my mat and a little bit that was in the lid. And I'm going back in and um, kind of dragging the paint up through the stems of this Doodle Garden stamp that I designed. And it's just helping everything kind of connect together and then making it more cohesive so that, so that the pieces aren't separate on their own. It's more of a joined page. And I did a little bit of splattering with some of that really minute kind of like fine colored gray. And I'm making sure everything's dry here. Now I'm going to get out some high flow golden fluid acrylics. And this paint is new to me. I just started kind of experimenting with it and I really like it. I'll also get out a miniature cup. It's kind of like a little palette, a little plastic one. And I'm going to put a couple drops of the high flow acrylic into that. Oh, looks like I missed a stem. <laughs> Gotta go back and get that baby, huh? Dry it up, make sure all my acrylics dry. That's one of my favorite things about acrylics. If I add some water to them, I can really play with them, and, but once they're dry, then they're permanent. Oh, I did get out this stamp and a Memento ink pad, and uh, I was kind of testing to see if I wanted that stamp in the background, but I didn't feel like the gray was matching very well. So uh, I didn't end up using it. Good thing I had some scrap paper to test on, huh? Oh, here now you can see that little cup and some golden high flow. Uh, now high flow paint is meant to go through an airbrush, so it's already very, very thin, but the color was super concentrated. So I did add a little squirt of water to kind of dull out that color a little bit. And I'm using it now. This is the shading um, gray in the high flows and that's exactly what I'm using it for. I'm kind of using it to shade in some darker areas to really ground out that stamp and then I'm going to go now uh, back over that. Oh, I do a little bit of splattering. I keep getting ahead of myself. I apologize. And then now I'm going back over some of that uh, brayered area with the acrylic paint um, to kind of just tie everything together because the grays are a bit different. One's a little darker and one's um, the acrylic the acrylic, the heavy acrylic, is a little bit lighter, but it's also kind of a cool gray, so it has a little bit of a blue tint. And then the high flow seemed a little warmer with sort of a red tint. So by going back over some of those areas, I can really pull everything together. I'm going to use my heat gun just to make sure everything's dry. The great thing about all the products I've used so far are that they're permanent once they're dry, so that's great. Um, I am going back in again. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably heard me use the term song and dance, but, but that's exactly what it is. Sometimes you just got to play around with things and let them dry completely, go back in with another layer. It's going to be a little bit darker in some areas. Let that dry completely. Maybe go back in even one more time. I had some uh, paint left over still, so I wanted to get some really nice, dark, uh, like bigger and dark splatters. You can see those happening. I'm 
make sure and dry those up so they're permanent and stuck in place and then I can come back with something else with my next step. Um, now I've gotten a little baby food jar and I'm using what's left in that, li that little tub, um, the little palette cup to add some marks, just some fun kind of coffee shaped or sort of similar circles. And you can use, if some of your paint ever gets too dark, you can always use a rag to pull some of the color out or a paper towel if you have. I really like, uh, lately I've been using muslin to kind of sop up extra paint and wipe my hands on and stuff. And um, I'll be using those in, that muslin in some projects later. Here you can see that kind of again, if anything is looking a little too dark, or, or even if it's just taking too long to dry, I can always sop up some of that. You can see there is that piece of muslin. It's got some green on it, a little bit of teal, some white, and uh, now it's got gray. Could just be the exact tones I need for a project coming up. Now I've gotten a number two pencil, and I am handwriting kind of just making it not legible um, along the the um, the bottom there. I turned my page over specifically so that it's more of an element than something that people are trying to read and I wanted to mimic it in the top left corner uh, and this is composition just kind of making sure that some of the elements carry across the page and that everything's not heavy on the right side with nothing on the left side. Now I'm just getting out some regular uh, Liquitex Gesso Professional Smooth and I'm going to use it to create some circles in that are going to overlap between the gray and the white area. And at this point I was kind of feeling like I had done some color blocking which I, is not um, something that I do very often and I really wanted to marry um, those that gray line and that white line so I'm going in and I do go over them twice just to give them a little bit more mm, because this gesso is a bit thin and I'm applying it with my fingers so it's kind of squishing out in some areas but just by letting the first layer dry and then going over it a second time uh, that really helps and adds quite a bit of darkness uh, well not darkness because it's white but it adds quite a bit of opaqueness to the paint to the gesso but I'm going to make sure it's dry and I'm going to get out my Stabilo Marksol and go around each circle just a couple times. I don't want it to be super heavy because um, even the black of the stamp didn't come out super black so it's kind of a fun gray toned piece. A couple times around. And then I'll get out, um, it's kind of a small medium, a medium small, it's not super tiny, but it certainly doesn't have that much width to it, um, round brush. And I'm going to go back and forth, keep dipping in some water, and then running it around and activating that Stabilo. Now one of the things I always have to remind myself is that the Stabilo is going to dry quite a bit lighter than it shows here. Right now it's super wet and super intense, but as it dries, it really um, grays back out. And that's it for this page. Um, I did add this piece to my Society 6. If you'd like to stop by and get a bag or like a tote bag or um, I, you can get a mug or a couple other things prints with this, 